Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. Today, oh, okay, not hot. Um, <laughs> today I want to show you how to make homemade baked beans, not from a can. So to get started with, I have some cubed up bacon in here. The only oil is the fat that is rendering off of the bacon. I've let this cook for probably about three minutes before you guys came in. Um, I just took about a quarter of a pound of bacon and cubed it up. And so now what we're gonna do is add in some onions. That's two small uh, chopped onions, or you could do one large. And we're gonna use the fat from the bacon as our fat to fry this up, so we don't need to add any extra oil or butter or anything. And we're also gonna add in some garlic cloves. That is four chopped garlic cloves. And it already is smelling good. I can already smell that hit from the, the garlic. I'm gonna start adding in some seasonings now, which is actually pretty simple for this. It's really just salt and pepper. But I am using smoked salt today to give us a little bit of a smoky flavor in there. So this, this part of it doesn't need to cook very long because the beans as a whole are gonna cook for a long time. So you don't wanna spend a ton of time on this, but you do wanna get it to the point where your onions are a little bit translucent. And they're actually pretty much already there and my bacon is getting, well, some of it is getting nice and crisp. So that is not bad at all. Now what I'm gonna do is step over here real quickly. We're gonna be adding in molasses today. Now the molasses is really important. So even if you don't really like a molasses um, flavor, which is mostly associated with gingerbread. So if you don't like gingerbread, you probably don't like molasses because the biggest flavor in gingerbread is molasses. But it's really important for this. It gives it that signature baked bean taste. So you wanna make sure that even if you don't like it, you're adding a little bit. And we are just adding a little bit today. We're gonna to add in a quarter of a cup. And what I like to do for this, even though I said we don't need any other oil, I just like to take whatever spray oil I have or non-stick and just kind of spray it in my measuring cup so that the molasses comes out easily. Low as molasses. Not when you put oil in there. And look how clean that came out. Oh. Like, that's why I do that. Because you're only going to get a very little bit that sticks. And otherwise, if you don't do that, you're going to have a lot of molasses stickage. So we don't want that. So we're going to stir this in. Now, I don't add any other sweetener to this. If you like your baked beans very sweet, I would recommend adding a quarter of a cup to half a cup of brown sugar. But for us, we find that this is, it, it's still sweet, so it still does have a sweetness to it, but it's not overpoweringly sweet. So this is how we like it. But you could definitely add more sweetness as you go if you want to. I'm gonna add just a couple more things in here at this point. Now these are actually completely optional, so you do not have to do this, but I like to get the extra flavor hit. One of them is gonna be liquid smoke, and you don't want to add in a whole bunch of this, at most a teaspoon. I'm just gonna add a couple glugs in there. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Again, these are not needed. You will still get a good baked bean flavor even without them. It's just adding a little bit extra flavor. And then a little bit of white vinegar. Now the white vinegar, I just like to add vinegar to every bean dish that I make. So that's why it's in there. And that is looking really beautiful. We're gonna add in our last component that is not actually beans and that is a can of crushed tomatoes. This is a 28 ounce can, so it's the big guy. You could also do diced tomatoes, but I like that the crushed doesn't have a 
textural element in there. It's pretty smooth. Um, you could also do tomato paste if you don't have crushed tomatoes. So we're just gonna get that mixed in really well. And now, if you wanted to, you could taste it at this point to see if it's the way that you like it. Um, I prefer to let it cook a little bit longer before I start taste testing it. And then I have one pound of dried, of dried pinto beans. These are pintos. You can also use navy beans. Navy beans are going to be more traditionally what you would use for a baked bean, but there's nothing wrong with using a pinto bean. So these were dried and soaked overnight in water that covered them on the counter. And that's kind of important because if you don't soak them overnight, if you start cooking them in their dried state, then it's gonna take them like about three hours as opposed to this is gonna take us about one hour actual cook time. So that's why you wanna go ahead and just do the extra step of soaking them overnight because it's gonna save you in the morning. All right, so that looks lovely, but we do need to add in some water because this is a pretty good sauce to bean ratio right now if you're looking at it, but those beans are still a little bit hard. And like I said, they are gonna need to cook for probably about an hour before they're done. So we wanna add in some water here. And the amount of water for this isn't actually that important. You just want to make sure it's enough that the beans can soak some of that up. So I think I used, let me see here. Yeah, I used two cups of water in there and I'm gonna keep an eye on it. So we're gonna just let this bubble away. I'm gonna put the lid on it so I don't get red splotches all over my kitchen. Um, and so that's gonna take about an hour, hour and a half, depending on when the bean is soft enough. That's really all we're waiting for on that. But if my liquid level goes down and the beans aren't soft enough, then I'll add a little bit more water in. So I'll see you guys when these are done. All right, guys. So here is our finished baked beans. Now these cooked for probably an hour and a half to two hours um, until they got to the right texture. We did add in water quite a few times, so I probably ended up using about six cups of water. One thing I would mention is to be attentive to how high you have your fire. Once you've got everything in there and it's come to a boil once, you can turn it down to just a simmer. Um, and if you do have it boiling, if you want to have it boiling, then just be careful to make sure that you are stirring it frequently and checking in on it because you could get burnt beans at the bottom. I did get a little bit of that. Um, and if you do get burnt beans, what you can do is you can just stop it at that point and transfer it out of this into another bowl without scraping the bottom. Um, but if you don't really care, just take care not to scrape too much of the bottom up on there. Um, if there's any bean dish that's going to handle being burnt a little bit, it's going to be baked beans. So hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment.